Now, on Friday, um, Israel forces conducted uh, raids in the occupied West Bank, resulting in the fatal shooting of two Palestinians. Among the deceased was a member of the armed wing of Hamas. Additionally, the Palestinian Health Ministry reported that at least one person was killed in a violent incident involving Israeli settlers near Ramallah. For more insights, I'm joined by Palestinian lawyer Mohammed Khatib. Mohammed, thank you so much for joining us this evening on News at Prime. It does seem as if we take one step forward and then take multiple steps back. Over 30,000 civilians and counting uh, now have been killed in Palestine. Tell us more about this recent raid in West Bank. Yes, thank you for uh, hosting me and good evening to everyone. Yes, in, uh, as you know, Palestine is divided into many sectors, and we said that uh, we speak about Gaza and the West Bank. And like in, in, the, in Gaza, it, uh, the war is continuous for now more than six months. And in the West Bank, it's the same uh, situation, but in, in different uh, acts. Like the one who is now acting and attacking the Palestinians is the settlers. We are speaking about violent militias, who are like above the law, who are uh, now taking the control of the situation in the West Bank and they are attacking the civilians and the, the Palestinian civilians who are like, you know, uh, don't have any arm to defend themselves. So we are speaking about the army, uh, occupation army that protect the settlers. And these settlers are also occupied by uh, military uh, equipment, guns, machine, machine guns, and different weapons uh, that they can, uh, without any observation, without any law, they are above the law, they can attack whenever they want uh, the Palestinian villages. So yesterday there was a, a, mass, a massive attack, uh, more than 1,500 settlers, uh, military ones like you know that they are semi-military like you know that they full with the with the military equipment they attack uh, Palestinian villages in Limgayir and the uh, east and north of Ramallah uh, it, this cause if uh, one uh, person at least killed another 16 uh, people were injured in life ammunition bullets and many there was highly injured uh, by this uh, this attack so we are speaking about a violence that this violence is continued since the 7th of October. It's increased. Yesterday it reached the uh, the top of it, and we we'll speak about like you know a continuous and uh, like you know organized uh, and systematic attacks. That uh, the idea uh, behind it is to control uh, the areas uh, in the West Bank and evacuate the villages from the people. So now they manage and they succeed to evacuate around 75 communities from uh, which is called Area C. Because you know Area C is like you know it's an area that it's out of the cities that it's classified by Oslo Agreement as it is uh, like under the, uh, the Israeli security uh, control. Mohammed, 75 communities evacuated from the West Bank. Where do they go then? Uh, they go to the uh, to other places that it's uh, farther away from the where they used to live, and uh, some of them are living in without any uh, homes. They are living in tents, and this is a hidden like you know policy that it's uh, not uh, so because the situation gets us so big uh, to speak about 75. Uh, communities, small communities in the West Bank compared to what's going on in Gaza. So the settlers now benefit from this situation that all the media, all the eyes, all the cameras are focused and all the news are focused about the massacre that's happening and the genocide that's going on in, uh, in Gaza and they are doing the, uh, and implementing their agenda of ethnic linking, uh, cleansing to uh, evacuate and to uh, displace the uh, displacement of the West Bank from uh, the Palestinian people. So we are speaking about a continuous and systemic agenda that's come from ideological beliefs of these settlers who are uh, supported and covered and uh, they have all the support 
and the facilities from the uh, right wing uh, government that control uh, and occupy the West Bank. It's also understood that one of those who were killed in this group that we're speaking of was a member of the armed wing of Hamas, who's been described as the head of um, Hamas's infrastructure and was killed during the exchange of fire. What do we know about this? No, I don't know. This is not a true. Uh, what I can tell you that the one who was killed yesterday, he was a, a civilian, he's not armed, he's not, he don't belong to any resistance or any military groups. He's like, you know, a civilian who is a normal person in the, from a very small village that he was trying to defend his family because the settlers, when they attack, they burn the homes, they burn cars, they attack all the village. And what you are speaking about, like maybe this is in another accident or another place. But like, you know, when we speak about the Satara's attack, it is like, you know, it's, they are attacking civilians mm -hmm. who are unarmed civilians, like, you know, peaceful civilians who are just trying to defend themselves without any weapons. They are like, you know, they, they don't have any tools. They need the protection. And what we are seeking as Palestinians is an international protection to protect us from these uh, uh, terrorist uh, groups, uh, settlers, terrorist groups. Like, you know, I don't uh, hear about, like, you know, and I'm sure that who was, who was being killed in this attacks is a civilian. There is no, it's not correct, uh, this mm -hmm. news about, uh, belong to any military. Maybe you are speaking about another uh, occasion or another uh, place, but like, you know, for, for what I know, and I'm like, you know, active in the ground. I know these people. I can tell you that this is not true. And I appreciate that clarity there because I was also going to ask you the effects of the Israel government banning some international media agencies as well. What effect that's having on um, misinformation and getting the correct information out there. We've seen already from the 7th of October, there's been a lot of reports that have been disputed that have come out to say that this is what happened and then a few days or weeks later we find out that in fact that wasn't true. Now having banned some of these international news outlets, is that having a further impact on the messaging that's coming out? Yes, because like, you know, who's searching for the, the truth, he will, he will find it. Like, you know, you just have to, to talk to the right people or to investigate or to just to, to bother yourself a little bit to know because the, the truth is so obvious and so clear. What is going on in the West Bank and also in all Palestine, we are like, you know, people who are under the occupation. It's our right to defend ourselves. It's our right to resist this occupation. It's like, you know, it's legal and it's approved by the all international laws and international beliefs. And also it's moral to defend ourselves as civilians in the front of these attacks. And what's going on in the West Bank now, it's like, you know, it's more than a military occupation. Like, you know, we, we could deal with the military occupation and with the army and also uh, demonstrate or, like, you know, raise our voices and resist this uh, army, uh, army. But what is going on is that we are speaking about uh, militias. And these militias are Jewish settlers, uh, militias, that it's, uh, like, you know, armed. And it's take the support from the government. And it's not only a group here or a group there. It's a systematic attacks. It's like, you know, ideological beliefs who are standing behind these uh, attacks. So we are speaking about a situation that the civil Palestinian, uh, they cannot do anything. And if they do anything, they will be claimed or be accused uh, that they are supporting uh, terrorists, while the terrorist is the settlers. And, uh, you know, I don't want to legitimize the killing uh, of kids or the killing of uh, youth uh, from, uh, and, you know, from this side or that, that side. But when you put your uh, youth and your, like, kids in, in the front uh, attacks and you are leading them to attack the, the villages and to attack the, you cannot say that these are like, you know, children and they are not, uh, uh, they are not part of the situation. So we are trying as Palestinians to 
uh, educate our people and to educate our children that we have the right to resist, but also we are not a terrorist, we are not doing terror, uh, terrorist attack, we will not kill children, we will not kill uh, civilians, we are trying to uh, use the non-violent methods to defend ourselves and our communities, and then this image that we are doing, it's been taken by the media in an opposite way, and this uh, media that is supporting the, the, the Israeli regime and supporting the uh, Israeli occupation are, are, are like, you know, taking what is good for them and not, uh, and not what is the fact is. So we are like, you know, saying all the time and we will keep saying that we will keep defending our rights and we will keep the resistance to the occupation but in the way that we will keep our humanity is the uh, above everything. And in trying to defend yourselves, Mohammed, how do you do that when you have airstrikes, you've got militia as well surrounding you? I mean, how are you teaching your kids to be able to do that when um, they don't even have the resources and powers about, uh, that the people who are aggravating this are? It's not easy, but you know, it's not easy to, uh, in, in, in front of all these massacres and genocides and killing, to kill people like, you know, try to follow the South African model or try to be Gandhi. It's not easy to, uh, to do that, but what we are trying to do is, is like, you know, uh, to resist, but in the same time to exist. By existing in this ground, in this land, it's like you know the idea of the Israeli uh, settlers and the colonizers. They want to evacuate us from our places. They don't want us to cultivate. They want us to build to build homes. They don't want us to grow. They don't want us to to do our normal life. But from our existence is our resistance. So just only to stay in this land and to suffer and to like you know, to ac like you know, not to accept, but like you know, to to try to uh, do the normal life and to stay in in this land by like you know, farming or by uh, cultivating or by building houses, by like you know, know the history of this Palestine, our to speak about our narrative and also to to, re to defend our children. Uh, from these attacks by like you know try to to put ourselves in the first in the front lines to protect them like you know here you will find a father will be killed just only because he wants to protect his family from these settlers uh, and from this violence it's not easy I, uh, I will not tell you that it's an easy mission it's complicated and it's not uh, but also, like, you know, we have, like, we are doing our PBR committees. We are, like, you know, doing observation, observation to, uh, committees to, uh, to protect and to interfere. If the settlers are coming, then the young people and the men will come in the front to try to defend these this settlers. And because of this, the price is, is high because a lot of people will be killed in this situation if the settlers are attacking the village. So... Like, you know, this is the only way that we do. We don't have guns. We don't have, like, you know, any kind of, of support. And we are alone. Even, like, you know, with the, the existence of the BA. But the BA is so restricted to the laws and it's so restricted to the agreements that they will not interfere in this situation. Who, who is the obligant and to be defending uh, the people who are under occupation is the occupier. So it's supposed to be that our protection is supposed to come from the military Israeli occupation. But unfortunately, this occupation is supporting and putting hand by hand with the settlers. So if it's come to the Palestinian, the army will not interfere. If the, if the attackers are settlers, then the army will not interfere. Mm. But if the Palestinian who will be the one who will attack any or defend himself, then the uh, army will be shooting this Palestinian and killed him. So this is the situation in the ground.
Well, I wish you all the best to you and your family. Please do stay safe. It does sound like a very complicated situation as well, especially that you aren't able to properly defend yourself. But thank you so much for sharing your time with us.